Hello and welcome to the lesson 8 of OpenSaba. In the previous lesson we were talking about JPA Entity Inherence, we see how we can refactor and extend from a base class, what are the good practice when we need to use different type of entities and we make modifications to the database tables. You can see more about this lesson in this link. You can use inherence not only for using the Java code and mapping, but also for using the user code definition, the view definitions. This lesson shows how view inherence works. If we execute our application, we can see that invoice and order have the same view. It's a default view that shows uh, a member for line. So, if we see here in our code, in the commercial document class, we have a view, but it's not working. It's not being inherited from the child. So, the view that we have declared in commercial document is not inherited by default. So, if we don't define a view for an entity, a default one is generated, and the view of the parent entity is not used. Just we see in this way. Usually, the view of the parent entity has this is not very useful because it does not contain the new properties that the current entity has, so this behavior is good for a uh, default behavior. Although is a non-trivial entity, you might need to refine the user interface and it might be useful to generate, instead of copy and paste, the view from the parent. You can do it using the extend view attribute in the view annotation. Using extend view attribute, the members that appear will be those of the extended view plus those declared in members of the current one. We are going to use the feature for defining the views for commercial document, order and invoice. We will declare now a new view for invoice. So, here use view annotation and now you need to declare the members like this. Year, number and date or in a single line. And note here if you are in this position you can press enter and continue adding more members. Now we need to declare here a tab named data. Open it. Now inside data we will add a customer We will add here details and remarks. Now we need to close and we will add here a new tab named oh, forgot here, okay. Orders for orders. Okay. We save here. And now we have a new view for the invoice entity. Now we can start our application and test this new view. So go to your application. In orders, you can see that this the default view apply. But if you go to invoice and click on new, you can see here the new view that we have created for invoice. We have the three members in line, just like in the code. We have customer details and remarks, one by line, like we have declared here. And we can see here data and orders tabs. In orders tabs you have all the functionalities for order. We can check the functionalities. So go to invoice, create a new invoice, call a customer and click on orders tab, click on new and here 
you need to call again customer. We will fix this later. Here you can add some products. You can add here the numbers and click on save. And as you can see, all the functionalities are working fine. Uh, the only change is the view. We have defined this view without inheritance. Note that we put all the members from the commercial document part of the invoice in the header and in the first tab naming data, and the collection of orders in the other tab. You will note how all except the orders part is common for every commercial document. Therefore, we are going to move this part to commercial document and then redefine this view using view inheritance. We need to remove the old view in commercial document and write this one. First, we need to go to commercial document and modify the view. So, go here and add data tab. Save here. This view indicates how to lay out the common data from all commercial documents. Now we can redefine the view for invoice from this one. So we need to go to invoice and here in the view we will remove some members like this. We left here members with order stuff and we add here extends view attribute and we say here supper default. This is to say that we will be uh, inheriting the view from the base document, commercial document. This way declaring the view for invoice is even shorter. We can see the common layout for order, invoice and all other possible commercial document objects are all in one place. So if we want to add a new property for commercial document, we need only to modify the view for this base document. We already have defined an adequate view for base document. Now we need to create the view for order and this is very easy. You want to see in a data tab all order functionalities and its members and in another tab the associated invoice. So we need to go to order entity and make here a new view using extends view attribute saying that So per default, we are inheriting the view from, from the parent, from base document, and here we will declare like members a tab name invoice for invoice. invoice. Okay, we save here and we have now a new view for order. Now we need to test this view, so execute your application. Now if you go to orders and click on an older order, you can see here the order with all its elements. And here you have a new view and a new tab named invoice. And if you click here, you can see the data of this invoice associated with order. Now we will refine more our views. Note that when you go to invoice and in the orders tab, when you open an order, you can see here some redundant information like the name of the customer and the number of the order. This information has no use because you have all here in data tab. So we will be modifying this in this way. First we need to create a new view in order. We name it no customer no invoice. 
declare here the members like year, number and date in the same line, details and remarks. We say here and we have two views for order now. This new view defined in order can be referenced from invoice to display the individual elements of the orders collection using the annotation collection view. We need to go to invoice and here use collection view annotation and write the name of the view. In this case is no customer no invoice. Save and that's it. And with this little code the orders collection will use more appropriate view from invoice to display individual elements. In the same way we don't want to display the customer and order information from the order user interface because it has more redundant data. So we are going to define a simpler view for invoice now. We start creating here in invoice entity a new view and we will name it no customer no orders. We need to define here the members that will be year, number and date, details and remarks. Now we say here and we have two views for invoice this new view defining in invoice can be referenced from order using the reference view annotation in this way we need to go to order entity and here we need to use reference view annotation and call the name of your view no customer no orders we save and this is all the code. Now we need to check if all the views are working ok. So start your application. As you can see here now in orders if you create a new order. In invoice you don't have customer or order number. So the interface has a simpler view. In this lesson we saw how to use inherence to simplify the definition of the user interface by using the extends view attribute of the view annotation. Along the way, we see some examples of simplifying the way the reference and collections are displayed using reference view and collection view annotations. How was the lesson? Don't forget to leave your comments and subscribe to the channel for new content. See you soon!